Hello, <clears throat> this is amateur radio station K8NDS in Cottonwood, Arizona, here in the high desert country. Coming back for another segment on helically loaded magnetic loop antennas. Uh, previous to this, if you've watched my other videos, I have uh, two magnetic loops, which are helically lo loaded or helically wound. And they cover from 80 through 10 meters of the combination of the two. I've moved on to a dual element magnetic loop, which this one only covers 17 through 10 meters, which are some of my favorite bands, and that's why I picked this for a uh, experimentation. Each one of these loops is helically loaded, 33 inches in diameter for each loop in a figure eight pattern, which puts them about six feet across with a little bit of tuning area in the center where the vacuum variable and the motor is located. Uh, and it tunes both loops where they cross over out of phase in the center. And they're fed at one end, which uh, excites both loops. So both loops are excited and they're rotatable from azimuth and elevation and the elevation rotation is showing to be an awful great advantage by being able to change polarizations uh, to somewhat in the center between uh, vertical and horizontal or all vertical or all horizontal but uh, tuning between the two or turning it between the two to get both angles of radiation seems to really uh, reduce the QSB uh, so far and so far I have logged 100 contacts with an average of 2S units gain over my single element helically wound magnetic loop, uh, which uh, did compare quite well to my elevated fed ground plane up until this point. And now, in a lot of cases, we're bypassing, surpassing the elevated fed ground plane with a two element uh, loop. We're going to use the elevated fed ground plane for a reference antenna. It's the best antenna I have for a reference at the time. It's a textbook perfect ground plane, fed 17 feet above the ground with 45 degree sloping radials, which bring the impedance down to about 50 ohms. So it's very flat across the entire band. And uh, because of the uh, 45 degree sloping radials, it gives a very low angle of radiation for DX. The takeoff angle is very low. Uh, so it's a good reference antenna and the best we have to compare. And what we're going to compare first of all is the noise floor, the baseband noise floor on these two antennas by switching back and forth from the elevated fed ground plane, which is a very noisy beast as everybody knows about verticals, compared to the two element helically loaded magnetic loop. And uh, we'll go back and forth from there and then we'll move on to low signal reception, uh, and we'll show the S meter and the spectrum scope on the 756 Pro 3 to demonstrate the low signal reception, the noise floor, and then we'll move on to high signal reception and show the differences. And we'll try to focus the magnetic loop by azimuth rotation to get the best signal possible to show you the, advent, the advantage of being able to rotate this antenna. Um, we don't have a good noise source right now. The area is pretty quiet, so it's going to be hard to demonstrate the side to plane of the loop uh, noise difference, but uh, I have experienced as much as 35 dB uh, when we've got an arcing power line by uh, rotating the antenna to the side, broadside to the noise source. So we'll go from there. We're going to get set up here and start showing these demonstrations. Thank you for listening. We'll be back with you shortly. Uh, what we're looking at here right now is the noise floor. Uh, notice the S meter and the spectrum scope, the noise floor of the two element helically wound magnetic loop. And we're going to switch to the elevated fed ground plane. And there is the noise floor on the elevated fed ground plane, both of these with no signal, so we can actually see what the noise floor is doing before we move on to looking at signals. We'll do this a few more times. Make sure you look at the meter and the spectrum scope. So we're on the ground plane and we're back over to the elevated or the uh, two element magnetic loop. You can also see all the signals on the spectrum scope that we're receiving above the noise floor. 
It's practically on S1 at this point. We're going to go back to the ground plane. And we're a little bit above an S4 on the ground plane. Well, let's see, 4 times 6, uh, 24. So we're over 20 dB um, less noise floor with the uh, loop. Back to the loop. Okay, as there you can see the great difference between the noise floor is which is a tremendous advantage in receiving signals. If you had anything below an S4, you wouldn't be able to copy them. Uh, with the loop here, you could copy anything down to an S, a uh, little over an S1. Back one more time. That's the uh, ground plane noise floor, and there is the uh, loop Thank noise floor. We've got to watch for the averages here because there's a lot of QSB. We're still on the ground plane. Over to the loop. Back to the ground plane. segment is going to do one more demonstration. We're going to demonstrate my previous single element loop, which is a helically wound half version of this two element. And we're going to switch between the uh, two element and the single element. And we're going to call for simplicity. A is the dual element. B is the single element. And we're going to switch back and forth on different stations and show you the gain that I'm getting from the single element to the two element in directionality. So here we go. Uh, this is the A, which is again is a sync is a dual element. And that's B. B A. And there is again A. Yeah, I I that's interesting. Yeah, I I haven't had that experience. Uh, I, uh, my only out port overseas was Japan when a? I was a pup. A new engine in, uh, in the mid 60s. And uh, my first uh, destroyer in which I served was home ported in, uh, in Yokosuka, Japan. And uh, I've uh, course, been back many times since and watched the, the tremendous transition <clears throat> of Japan. B. But uh, we weren't worried about uh, mowing grass. Watch the estimator uh, closely. Uh,
uh, just down the road from Langley, and uh, and we uh, we Dang. it was a late wedding, five o'clock wedding. So we uh, he being a, a, a heck of a golfer with the hey. college a varsity golfer, we we had a. Uh, a man's golf outing in the morning. Only Following the demonstration of how easy. much less QSB and, uh, you have awesome. with the uh, dual element again, which is uh, antenna A, and, and uh, the single uh, element, which is antenna B, watch this closely for both signal strength and QSB. Uh, uh, we are now going uh, to antenna A. Right, but uh, they're really a really great expensive for me, at least a fifth QTH. I mean, uh, again, I can't get much better response for a vertical. B. Uh, a. No uh, protection on it. If there's a northeast breeze, uh, I mean, yeah, we get all of it on this part of the lot. Uh, so uh, it, it's currently been up in the 50, uh, 50 uh, mile an hour. B. Uh, wind range, 50 mile an hour wind range, no problem. Uh, I did take it down for, uh, for I think, but uh, everything a. else, it's been up for it. this segment on the characteristics uh, comparison of the two element magnetic loop versus the elevated fed ground plane for reception. In our next segment, we will have a uh, comparison of the transmission characteristics of the two element loop versus the single element loop. Thank you.